Minor spoilers will be in this video for the movies I'm going to talk about, but really though, who gives a shit? Sometimes you need to appreciate the absolute worst to be able to appreciate the best. I like to absorb as broad a spectrum as possible when it comes to movies, and I certainly have over the last year. So without further ado, here's a list of the five worst movies I saw in 2014. I know for a fact that one or two choices in here will bring plenty of people's piss to a boil, but I'm not going to lie out of fear of what some 13-year-old's going to tell me in the comments. Grain of salt, people. Grain of salt. Number 5 Boyhood is one of those movies people seem to flock to and appreciate purely because of two reasons. One, because it's an original and untested idea to film someone over a span of many years to get a natural progression of their life without trying to cast other actors which look the same as them at different ages. And two, because it has a perfect 100 on Metacritic. So of course it's a flawless movie and I have no choice but to like it. Right? I have no problem with aimless movies that focus on character interaction and relations, but Boyhood has one major problem in particular. What's going on in the boy's hood ain't that interesting. See what I did there because it's a title of the movie. Oh, whatever. The first half of the movie is a collection of, oh, I remember those things from the past moments. Oh, I remember Dragon Ball Z. Oh, I remember Game Boys. Oh, I remember that child actors can't act worth a damn. The only reason you little cum gums are here is because fucking Charlie's mom made him bring his little asshole brother, and he drags along you little dice stanglers. Fucking buzz not talking shit. And then when it moves on to his later teenage years, he becomes the most predictable shell of an indie movie teenager trope you can possibly imagine. In every scene, he constantly ponders about useless existential bullshit and is a bumbling asshole to everyone he interacts with. People seem to appreciate the fact that this movie shows someone naturally growing up and going through all the things that they went through. But why? Kids and teenagers are boring, stupid assholes. Why would I want to watch a three-hour movie about that? And what makes it even worse is that there are likable characters and stories going on, namely with the boy's parents. There is interesting and emotional drama going on there, but it's given the backseat to another rant about how everyone's living on their mobile phones and how it's ruining society or whatever. Not to mention the manipulative drunk stepdad scene that is fleetingly forced in to add a sense of drama to the movie. Look, don't get me wrong. Unlike all the other movies on this list, at least this one counts as a movie. I just don't like it very much. I didn't go into it wanting to hate it. In fact, all the inane word of mouth did nothing but raise my expectations to an unrealistic level to make me expect something truly groundbreaking. I can appreciate the fact that this movie hits a core with certain people, but that certain people ain't me. I know there are definitely worse movies from 2014 that are more insufferable than Boyhood, but it's not very often that I'm on the total polar opposite to seemingly everyone in the universe. And besides, where's the fun in putting some boring predictable mess like Tammy in a list like this? The remaining four films are predictable enough anyway. Might as well add some drama to it. Something Boyhood probably should have tried to do a bit more. You're fucking lying. True that. Number four. Tusk is one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen. Its own existence was created through an ad lib in one of Kevin Smith's podcasts, a stupid joke. But because it's Kevin Smith, he somehow actually managed to make his dumb joke into a movie. And that's probably the best way to describe it, a dumb joke. The idea of the movie is that a popular podcaster gets captured by a crazy serial killer guy who turns him into a walrus. You know when something really funny happens to you and you try to describe it to someone else who wasn't there but it just doesn't quite have the same resonance? That's pretty much what Tusk is in a nutshell. I'm sure Smith has a great time laughing away with all his actor buddies at how ridiculous the premise is and how weird it is that this movie was even made in the first place. But the writing isn't good enough to carry a 100 minute horror comedy that isn't very funny or entertaining. To tell you the absolute truth, I didn't actually get mad or angry at this movie for the first half. The jokes weren't hitting and the tone was weird and all over the place, but the balls aren't craziness was strangely gripping to me. I was actually readily anticipating this guy being turned into a fucking walrus. But then the movie introduces a new character. A character played by Johnny Depp. And my god, does he kill the movie. Precisely as soon as he enters the movie, it fucking dies. And it dies hard. It's padded with these painfully elongated scenes of characters talking about nothing. And Johnny Depp's anticipated cartoonish caricature flailing around like a fish out of water. Or I guess a, a walrus out of water. Even. And not to mention the fact that the walrus man itself looks outlandishly retarded when they get round to actually showing it. The movie's not so stupid or bad that I find it personally insulting, but at the same time I'm not going to strap a sign to myself saying please watch Tusk and run around town screaming with enthusiasm either. Number 3 Seth MacFarlane's style of comedy is extremely polarizing. You either love it or you hate it. But A Million Ways to Die in the West can only be hated because it sucks. It's just terrible. By the moment Neil Patrick Harris had shit into his hat for the third time, I realized that this movie didn't even deserve any strong reaction to it. Why should I put any effort into formulating some clever remark about why it's so bad when clearly MacFarlane gives the same amount of a shit? It's so shoddy and sloppy with how it's put together that it all comes down to one simple fact. Never watch this movie. 
Never get mad about the existence of this movie. Just casually brush it out of any kind of relevance and ignore it. Let it rot away and torment McFarlane's rich, obnoxious mind. A permanent stain on his IMDb filmography. No nauseating CG bear will make me forget your mistakes, McFarlane. Learn from them, you moron. Number 2 a small part of me died when I saw this movie. I'm not even kidding. And an even bigger part of me would have died if it wasn't for the number one movie on this list. But The Amazing Spider-Man 2 was so badly structured, so poorly realized that I felt directly insulted by the end of it. The movie has something like 23 acts. Plot points going all over the place, characters being motivated by things that make absolutely no sense. Cringy, outlandish overacting, and one of the worst soundtracks I think I've ever heard in a movie. Hans Zimmer should be ashamed. Fuck it, everyone attached to this movie should be ashamed. Well, at least anyone with any creative control should be ashamed for this fucking abomination. And I guess that's the biggest problem here. It's so clear that this movie has been carefully designed by a bunch of fucking suits with a list of business checkpoints to tick off. Set up a bunch of recognizable villains and tease the Sinister Six for future sequels. Uh, check? Mimic famous scenes from the comic to please mindless fans and keep them happy even if it makes no sense and is painfully crammed in? Check. Put the rhino in a stupid huge mech suit to sell toys and have a fight scene for the trailer but only actually be in the movie for three minutes. Checkerino. Way to completely take any wind out of the sails of this franchise, Sony. If anything, at least this movie's so bad it might convince them to give the rights back to Marvel, who would treat Spider-Man with the respect he deserves. Ten years ago, whoever would have thought that Iron Man and fucking Thor would take front stage to Spider-Man? It really shows how they dropped the ball on this one. Number one. Transformers Age of Extinction, or as I like to call it, Fuck You the Movie, is by far the worst piece of shit I saw all year. The fact that this fucking movie has the audacity to be nearly three hours long, as well as making zero sense the entire time. The fact that things just happen, for no reason. The fact that nothing makes any goddamn sense. The fact that no one involved gave any measure of a shit because they're so Barry minted because of it. It's unbelievable to me. If this is the type of unintelligent, slack-jawed, manipulative entertainment the masses want, then my faith is even more lost in the direction the movie industry is heading. For some stupid reason, I see people defending this movie because it has giant robot dinosaurs and endless amount of explosions and other things from their childhood they recognize. And that's enough for them to give it a pass. You realize you're the problem if you say that. You're the problem. It's lazy, despicable filmmaking that should not be rewarded by anyone. And you know what? I could get down with a good Transformers movie. I'm not saying these movies all have to be high art, but if you want a big, dumb action movie, at least make the action tangible. There is no choreography or style to anything. It's crass, badly shot thuggishness crudely created in a computer. And I haven't even touched on the sickeningly obvious product placement burnt into every fucking frame. And the pandering to the Chinese audience to maximize the amount of potential revenue. Transformers Age of Extinction sums up everything wrong with the industry in its overblown running time, obnoxious comedy, racist characters, pandering writing, and manipulative base material. Fuck this movie. Fuck everything about this movie. There was not one second in which I was entertained. It's a true fuck you to fans of cinema. And I'm not saying you're a bad person if you do like this movie. I'm just saying if you like these movies, you should never talk to anyone who considers themselves a fan of film about film because you're a blinded fucking idiot. Or you're 10 years old. So there's my list of the five worst movies of 2014. I don't think I've actually got that fucking angry in ages. You can even f hear it in my voice from raising it so much. <laughs> I can really see a potential shitstorm brewing here, but I'm not going to pander like the fucking movies on this list. I'm going to tell you how I feel, whether you agree or not. Seeing as that's the point of the channel in the first place. So what do you think? Do you agree or disagree with my list? What would be your top five? Tell me in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. Make sure you check out a couple of my other videos as well. And I'll see you next time. Bye.